Hello, everybody. What's going on here? So many people. So nice to see you. Such a great community. And Danielle from Leonardo is here. Gustavo's here. Uh, Jisoo, Cletus, Marcus, Joanne, Novak, Laura, Schwartz, Patricia, Sarah, Stephen, Liliana. Welcome to everybody. Since we have little time and lots of people, I will just pass it on to Gustavo and Danielle, and then we see how it rolls. Welcome. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. It's great. Can I share slides now? Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's so, do it. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for, for coming today. Um, today we will uh, be in this panel. The title is Reach, a new vision for art side collab collaborative networks for actionable change. My colleagues are Laura, Stephen, and myself, and Danielle, the, Danielle will uh, be speaking soon, who represents Leonardo. Uh, let's, uh, next slide. So today we'll actually talk about the, we'll go over the introductions of the presenters, why a research collaborative, the history, uh, our professional work, discovery. Uh, we'll have a, a short summary, and then uh, we'll talk about future uh, events. Next slide, and take it away, Danielle. Okay. Should get to the next slide, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. So this is just a brief introduction of uh, Leonardo, the International Society for Art, Sciences, and Technology, with a strong emphasis on international and society, meaning network, community, think tank. Next slide, please. Okay. 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 Uh, what Leonardo does is we're an enterprise think tank that works at the intersection of art, science, and technology by creating inroads to solve some of the world's most pressing issues. And we do that through our publications and our programs, and I'll talk a little bit more about that process in a moment. Now, one of the th things that I was just thinking about this year as we're uh, coming into 2020, a few years ago, we were in Linz uh, for Ars Electronica, and we were the recipients of the pre-Golden Eco Award for Visionaries in Media Art. And I remember this moment, this was such an important uh, time for, for me and for the rest of our community, we had some people who are no longer with, with us, um, such as Frank Popper and some of the people who founded Ars Electronica, and then many of the people who are in this call today and, and those who are really coming into the community uh, for its first time during this event in 2018. And during this time, we were also thinking about what do we do now? Where do we go next? Because we have been pion radically pioneering since 1968 building this network of this global think tank uh, in our community. We since then have published thousands and thousands of artists and theorists and scholars and philosophers and scientists uh, in this transdisciplinary space and still to this day hold the top ranking journal uh, in its class, uh, especially with transdisciplinary art. We're number three in visual arts overall, number one in the in terms of the new art, tech, and science journal um, out there. Next, please. And the last slide that I'm gonna leave us on is how we operate. So Leonardo really operates on a full cycle creative engine, and you can come into this in any way you, you feel appropriate or, or actually begin to know us by, but really the ideation, the creativity, the, the experiment is central to what happens with everything that we do. Uh, so it's not just about a project coming in and us showing one element of it, an end result or an in-process work, but really kind of thinking about how it connects to 
the community? How do we actually foster collaboration? How do we create residencies with our global residency platform all around the world? How do we connect with each other, convening our, our laser salons in over 45 cities worldwide? How do we disseminate this information through uh, ephemera, scholarship publications, and other types of radical experimentation in terms of uh, um, production? And then how do we actually understand impact? And all of these things connected to each other really is what supports a big idea. And so when we started to work with the team that you're gonna hear from today, it really was about being able to foster all of those together in this one particular cycle. And I'm really excited to be able to support uh, the, the team that is about to introduce themselves because they really have been incredibly thoughtful of both the, the practice in which they come into, but also the community in which they serve, which is the Leonardo Global Network. So thanks everyone uh, for being on here. And I also really want to thank Victoria Vesna and UCLA Botanical Gardens and all this, all the team on the Telluric uh, Vibrations uh, uh, Kepler Gardens for actually helping create this and making this possible. So again, thanks. And that's that's what I have to contribute to this presentation. I'm going to hand it back over to you all. Oh, thank you, Victoria, and thank you, Danielle. Next slide. So why a research collaborative? Collaboration isn't a new concept. It's been going on for centuries, and it. We, we can track it back to the beginning of uh, more primitive living groups where uh, areas of, for cooking and eating and childcare uh, were common. Um, it extends back to academic research, the military, business, arts, education, medicine, and technology. But it has largely struggled to get a footing in the individualistic stronghold of West, the Western world where the collective is important only in so much as it advances the individual rather than the other way around. Fast forward generations and we now face virtual mass extinction because we as a species have been unable to think of ourselves at, um, as part of a larger ecosystem. We've been unable to use ourselves to support the greater collective and we've been unwilling to devote our efforts to the greater good. Our relationships with one another are actually our biosphere. So when we talk about climate change, when we talk about racial, gender, and economic equity, we're actually talking about our individual and collective relationships to a biosphere. And what, what's called for now is a change in how we use ourselves to serve this, the survival of our species. And that's what this workshop is going to explore. Our universe is, is complex and not one person or one discipline can know enough to solve the kinds of problems that we're facing. It's only when we use a lens that compounds the perspectives of, of diverse disciplines that we can see three dimensionally and indeed four, five or six dimensionally through undifferentiated time and space in order to know how to fashion the kinds of solutions that can actually hold the weight of the gravity of the problems we're, we're facing right now. So what does it take to communicate holistically about these problems? It takes the right partners whose disciplines intersect in very significant ways. It takes a common vocabulary, which must be built through sensitive listening and repeated interaction. It takes a, a shared vision and a common goal with a predetermined deadline for a product. And it takes the right emotional environment, one of trust, appreciation, and, and safety. It takes dedicated time and space, sufficient time and designated space where partners can show up, feel safe, and do their work. So in this, this slide, uh, if you'll take a look at the right side of this panel, you'll, you'll see a triptych. Uh, that illustrates samples of each of our work, and it represents the dimensions of our individual expertise and professional perspectives, the lenses, if you will, that we use to view the, the assignment that Leonardo gave us, which was to try to chart the course of um, bringing together the information um, we were collecting from the community. The top section 
uh, of, the, of that panel is uh, representing my piece, which is a sound installation that I designed. Um, and it examines the way that human beings perceive and use sound to orient themselves in their environments. Leaving the 20th century notion of viewing this painting as simply an aesthetic piece of work, instead, this painting can be understood to depict components of mathematical elements that can be mined for information on the structure of the universe. As such, this painting should be seen as a realm of mathematical equations. Um, the the image on the on the red image is a uh, part of my my dissertation work titled "Shaping Spaces Information: A Conceptual Framework for New Media Architectures," uh, and it's representing a, a flocking and swarming predator prey model in three dimensional space. So for the purpose of this workshop, I'd like to invite you to think about the ways that these three artistic and scientific perspectives come to get, came together under the umbrella of a collaborative effort sponsored by Leonardo to view a problem from the disciplinary perspectives we each bring in order to come up with solutions that might only result from this specific collaborative group. Okay. Uh, take a, um, we're, I'm basically going to explain a little bit about we're going to contextualize the presentation. So we started uh, months ago, actually, when COVID, um, when the COVID crisis, the pandemic hit, it seems like we met a few weeks afterwards uh, from a series of meetings that Leonardo organized uh, called the CNC meetings. Uh, and then a few months later, then we were asked by uh, Danielle to meet separately. And, um, and I would say that it was a, a life changing experience. And I wanted to thank my collaborators. The images on the right show a spectrogram. And uh, it was part of an analysis of text, uh, audio and video from some of the material that was gathered. Um, and then the graphic on the the graphic here in the center is representing the three of us coming together uh, as a, a new media artist, uh, a scholar, mathematician, philosopher, and a neuropsychologist. Uh, this, this diagram right here, um, the team, we started to basically think through a lot of um, happenings that were occurring in culture. So pandemic, Black Lives Matter. I think there was a economic calamity, <laughs> uh, civil unrest, and now we have the California fires. And I think we came together to find comfort in each other's uh, ideas and each other's um, wisdom. And I was very excited. So the three here, uh, we started thinking about how an organization like Leonardo can change into a network of networks, uh, an open access educational area, an aggregator of knowledge. And the idea is that the, any, this idea could scale to any organization that wants to unite people into making actionable change. This diagram right here represents Leonardo uh, as a network of networks. And if you notice here on the in the text box underneath the red arc, uh, we started really thinking about social justice collaborations, intergenerational mentoring, and cross-disciplinary innovation. We were surprised that the three of us had such rapport that we were finishing and starting each other's sentences without even trying. And that was, that was so special. Uh, next slide. So the orb on the right side of your screen is, was constructed by Stephen and Gustavo to represent a mathematical and geometric uh, representation of the dimensions of our group's collaborative discoveries. The three dimensions represented by the three spheres in the center um, represent the artistic and architectural knowledge that Stephen and Gustavo bring to our collaborative. And it situates us in a mathematical and geometric space this is our own collaborative biosphere. 
the third sphere represents the neuropsychoanalytics of human perception and uh, per human perception and functioning, and that's the element that I bring to the conversation. Um, what uh, what we're looking at is um, the repetition of patterns that create and construct um, reality. It, it's both reality in our concept, conceptual framework, and it's also, from a neurological perspective, uh, it, it, it mirrors a kind of neural prototyping that happens in the brain that actually creates brain tissue. So Stephen, how's uh, yours? This geometrical structure is a topological vessel that can move with great speed, perhaps the speed of light. Its geometry is composed on the fly of transformations of parallax views. It flattens reductionistic regimes. Its meshing of Cartesian lines gets visually translated into non-Euclidean temporal flows. Uh, this next slide, um, and I'll just let this play. Uh, we started thinking about uh, different collaborative models, group models, and so you'll see here on the bottom, it's a, uh, fr from Laura's work, and it's an illustration that actually shows people collaborating. And there's a series of steps. Laura chose these four images, but what I found so special were, were the last two. How do we work together? How do all those pieces come into a larger solution? And from the second to the last to the last image, there's a design solution. When you see the ants, there's a type of intelligence here. And um, uh, in science, you can see it as a super organism. But what's special about this and what ca captured our attention as a group is that you can see the ants moving together like the, the fluid next to it. So we were speculating that maybe the way our minds and ideas and collaborations work is probably very fluidic. And how do we get there? Uh, next slide. Stephen. The three forms represent us, the collaborators, and are interchangeable. The center form fuses the other two forms. You can see through these forms, forming a linear graph that gets overlaid repeatedly and becomes more apparent as it is repeated. Oh, b before we get started, this is the Reynolds number and the Reynolds equation. I happen not to say that before. So next slide. So from nothing to something, from a hodgepodge of collection of gypsy artists and scientists to a research collaborative, which generates solutions to the world's most daunting problems, how do we get there? This next film clip demonstrates how a collaborative, in this case, a musical chamber group, whose members have collaborated professionally for over a decade, finds their way out of the unknown using their individual knowledges and collaborative relationship. In this experiment, I took a piece of classical music that was, the quartet was unfamiliar with, and I distorted the music by adding an additional line to the staff, and then shrunk it back down to the original size, which dislodged the position of the notes, making them almost impossible to decipher. The quartet was filmed as they tried to make sense of the music and I interviewed them throughout the process to discover what they used to help them orient. I was particularly interested in how they used their relationships to one another and their own individual knowledge, whether they worked in egalitarian fashion or, a leader, or if a leader emerged, and if everyone's input was used, and here's what we found. Can we get the sound? Uh, there's a mute on. Are you hearing the sound? No. You have to share sound. It seems, it seems like we have a sound <laughs> problem. I hear the sound, so my apologies. Did you share sound on the You screen? have to share sound. You have to unshare and share sound again. Uh, let's see. One second.
the checkbox in the small left-hand corner of the share. <clears throat> so add an extra ledger line on top. We can hear now. Right. We're starting to hear something, but we're not seeing anything. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Seems like a headphone, earphone. Oh, is it? Sorry. Is it working now? Well, we see the slide presentation, but uh, we're not to the place where we were, and we're, so we're not hearing, we're not seeing or hearing the video now. Uh, maybe, maybe stop and start your sharing. Maybe it's your Wi-Fi. Yeah, I, that's yeah, what I. Telling him to hit the audio in the in the share at the lower left hand corner when you share. Yeah, give me one second because it okay. sounds like it. So when totally... you, when you go, this is classic Zoom. When you go to share and you see which screen you want, at the bottom you'll see the little checkbox. Make sure your checkbox computer sound. Okay, my apologies. No apologies. This is part of the deal. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm already nervous, so this makes it even more nervous. So give me well, one second. Nervous energy is just yeah. performance energy. Don't okay, think. so I'm clicking on you. I okay. have everything clicked. Got it. Now, do you see my screen? Is yes, we can. Okay, so let's let's get to it. We're, we're good. And then. Ooh. That was a quick review. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Do you hear the sound? You hear it. Yes. Right. That's actually, you know, technically that's not transparent. Can you back up a little bit, please? Just go uh, to about, let's go to. We put, you, what we see, we read down a step. Gustavo, can you hear me? Add an extra yes, yes. On Where? Back this video. Back up about half. Right. Keep going right. To yeah, of just fine. chaos as I was just doing again went back to sort of general shape interpretation and then then I would latch onto something else and start going again but there was no system to it expectations dashed the piece has become a train wreck Are we good, Laura? Yeah, we're doing good. Okay, give me a minute. Talk. Okay. Oh, we're going to continue that, right? Okay, sorry about that. All of these have led the quartet out of the confusion sound? into music. No, it's just that we didn't get to be there working it out. So you would need to go back to where we just stopped. A little bit more. Are we good there? Well, we're just not, we're kind of, it doesn't really show, unless we follow it through, we aren't going to see how they worked it out, but we can, we can keep going. Okay. So what we didn't see, we can, we can stop it now because we're, we've kind of, we, jet, we need to, we'll just um, quickly recalibrate. So um, what, what you, what you didn't see in this film was the ways in which the collaborative really struggles to try to figure out what the notes were from their perspectives. So each of them plays a different instrument, um, but they're playing the same piece of music, but they're, because they have different instruments, the music itself is different. The changes in each of their scores was different. So they were, but they could hear that it wasn't blending together in the way that they would have expected. So they were having, they had kind of a sonic orientation and disorientation. Um, they, are, they had visual cues that weren't kind of making sense. And so they had to use their, their knowledge and their history and their relationship with one another to try to figure out what was going on. So then we'll just go to the next slide. So now it's time for uh, our exercise. So we have a distinguished group of panelists here. And um, what 
we're going to do is kind of um, we're going to we're going to replicate both that experiment and also uh, the experiment that the three of us embarked on, where we um, had an assignment and we needed to figure out how to bring our individual disciplines to that very specific site and to create something that had never been created before. So we've we've asked. Um, all of you to come and do that with us as an to test this out. Does this work? Um, each of you comes from a different discipline, a different perspective, um, but all of you have a commitment to the art science collaborative. And to, um, so, what I'd like to do is introduce ourselves, um, starting with your name, the country that you're from the discipline that you work in and the current research you're invested in. And if you wouldn't mind, as you get to know your cohort, if you would make notes of the people that you're going to be working with in a few minutes, um, what about their work and their discipline is of interest to you? Do you think that you could use in your own work? And, um, and this is a way of beginning to get to know one another. So, um, on my screen, um, I, the first person I see is Cletus, so could you begin? Oh, we can't hear you, Cletus. Everyone's screen is different, so you have to say for me. Very good. Um, my name is Cletus Dalglish Schomer. I live in Los Angeles and teach at Otis College of Art and Design um, my, uh, in the United States. Um, my work is both uh, in art history and in studio art, as well as architectural design. And my current research is related to the history of the expansion of the concept of site specificity and how the extension of that notion to sites of discourse is transformed and challenged in a world of electronic communication uh, and networks. Um, Thank you. Patricia. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Patricia Marland. I'm originally from Austria, currently residing in Santa Barbara, finishing up my dissertation. Um, I'm a historian, and I am one of the few women who studies ancient war and politics. If we do the broad spectrum um, topics I look at are PTSD, you know, besides the logistics of war and what drives us. Um, I also look at identity, I look at networks. My dissertation is the first work to look at a big comprehensive geographical reach, as in that I look at migrant workers and their horses in cavalry in ancient Greece, uh, the Near East, as in Assyria and Persia, and also ancient China. And I'm also interested in ideas of exchange and communities and how, how ideas travel. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Sarah Schwartz. I am a science writer, and I'm also a PhD candidate in microbiology. Um, I study environmental microbiology, so I, I really study how microbes and their environment have co-evolved with each other over billions of years. Um, and sort of the interface between environmental and geological and living systems and how those sort of shape the environments that, that exist on the planet today and over time. Liliana. Hello, thank you for the invitation. My name is Liliana Comas Gallegos. Uh, country, I, I am from the border region between Tijuana and San Diego. So I come from the in-between, a place called Nepantla, uh, and it's a liminal space uh, with multiple forms of reality, and we experience simultaneous uh, things uh, li uh, due to living in perpetual tension and conflict. Uh, and my discipline, again, is not going to be as simple uh, to explain because as an epantlera or a border, a border person or an in-betweener, I followed in a very unconventional path. I have a rhetoric BA from Berkeley, and then I have an MA from, in Mexican literature. Tijuana Border Studies from uh, San Diego State, and then a PhD from UC Santa Barbara in Spanish Languages and Literatures. That's what it says in my certificate, but I incorporated a curriculum in philosophy, media arts, uh, music, computer science, Chicano studies, 
And uh, it's my basis is uh, my what I my goal is uh, is decoloniality. That's my discipline, right? Uh, so I create a patchwork of technology, film production, history, critical race theory, art, queer, Chicana, and Africana studies, and media arts experimentation, uh, all working towards the primary goal of reinforcing the project of decoloniality and the praxis of transmodernismo. Uh, my current research, I engage in decolonial experimental multimedia production, and I examine resistance pedagogy and experimentation with technology uh, based on reimagining media and communication uh, through, again, a decolonial lens. Um, I like to juxtapose, juxtapose formats of marginal cultural history to dominant ideological formats of mass and other media representations to then present new ways of envisioning history, media production, communication, and the way we produce and present and share academic knowledge. Uh, the main goal for, of my research production performances is to decolonize the understanding of what research is uh, through experimental methods that then work uh, to turn this individualistic and traditional, we call it traditional, but it's not traditional for where I'm from, uh, experience of reading uh, academic information like from a book, right, into now a multi-dimensional experience and explorative way of interacting with live research when you can experience research. Uh, and so this is the kind of work I do and I also uh, this comes from working with the community uh, and also from my own uh, legacy as a, I come from a warrior people from the border. We're also Native American and we're also Spanish, but my ma maternal line is indigenous and uh, I come from a line of, of people who fought against colonialism and modernity with their bodies. And so this work is something that I do as acknowledgement. Uh, and it's part of a legacy of resistance of which I am part of. And uh, I do it in remembrance of those who have been silenced, undervalued, ignored, uh, again, for the lack of affiliation to the oppressive stance of coloniality and its hierarchical set of values and goals. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Liliana. Thank you. I, we're we're going to hear a lot more about your Thank work. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jisoo. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jisoo Park from Seoul, Korea. Yeah. <laughs> And um, um, yes, and I'm making my art piece for exhibition and workshop, and also teaching media art related major uh, department and researching. Um, and the current research and my ongoing research is about. I actually wrote something here, and then maybe I need to read a little bit like a comparative, com comparative research on space time with a focus on diversity and particularly in various artwork like a literature work as like an invisible city for example like Italo Calvino or like um, Bruce's like work like what is the real and then not real but that's actually true the kind of uh, literature work expands the cinema moving image the media installation work and architecture in, in architecture in installation too. And so I wanted to, I am doing to compare to all that and make my own artwork about space time. And now I'm working on from that, like a macro and micro and macro, macro thing, which is, uh, I work with this. This uh, scientist who watching the cell, and then I'm working with the uh, kiosk, which like recording all this um, universe cosmos image, and then when I see that macro micro, and I really can see looks like a very similar in visual. And then nowadays we are in this time, like we, we really thinking about where we are and uh, where we are come from and where we need to go. And I think in the first time, all the, all the continent, all the people who you are, where you're from, what are you doing, you, you're really thinking about like everyone at the same time. And you yourself and your like family, also your colleague or, or someone you never, even meet. So when I see these things, like even we is very interesting about, maybe I need to do in 30 seconds, but we need to, 
I always, we always came from that cell and the, and the cosmos universe. So we always were very fascinating about that. But now it's more like where I really think where we are. So I'm working on that right now. And uh, also like we using um, sound and briefly like AI and then trying to like connect or what you feel that's like my ongoing project right now. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne. Hi, I'm Joanne Couture Morin. I'm from the United States. Uh, my discipline is crazy. I started out as an acoustic composer and have been at UC Santa Barbara for the past 36 years, um, building, going from digital audio to all of the senses and eventually the pictures that you see behind me are my instrument. It's a three-story sphere in an echo-free chamber. I'm in the California Systems Institute and I'm working with um, the physicist and uh, material scientist uh, to um, do uh, visualization, multimodal representation of um, higher dimensional space and um, trying to have a dialogue as an artist and a composer with these scientists to make them understand what it is that we know so well, which is perception of the senses. And now that we use the computational platform, uh, we can visualize and sonify this information in ways that they can't. But this is to bring it out to the people so that people that don't have the ability for the kinds of mathematics that we know can start to see this and it becomes real to them. And our whole idea is we built a whole infrastructure, an open source language called Allolib for everybody to use licensed by the Regents of the University of California, which will partner us together as a general purpose infrastructure. I would like to get to the point of where we use this infrastructure uh, to connect ourselves virtually so that we have ways to actually disseminate our research, not only by publication, but by databases that have our content and allow us to experience this and to actually work together as a collaborative team um, and, and bring this out physically to build these, um, these sites uh, where communities to come together. The most important thing that I feel is that academia, um, cities, um, industries have become institutions instead of communities like they used to be in the old days when we were talking about group sharing, when we were talking about how we come together as a team and how we help each other. And right now, let Amazon sell their underwear um, online. Let's now go out and change these spaces into artisan communities with, with scientists and artists and the community to come together as a team. So that's been my goal for the past 36 years. I feel that I built an infrastructure that I can actually land out there for everybody to use. And uh, right now we were doing it physically downtown. I was, I was getting a place, but now we are going virtually with COVID. So that means we've had to really go right into the heart of the internet. Right now we're doing HPC, high performance computing that's gonna be right to the web, working with our material scientists. We can get NSF grants for that, but the idea is to funnel that into the arts as much as I can. I guess that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Thank you. And Marcus. Uh, hi. Uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful group. It's very nice to be here with everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, Marcus Novak. I, I teach with uh, Joanne and I'm in the same department as, uh, as Gustavo. Uh, <clears throat> I direct something called the Trans Lab. I'm from Greece. Uh, but I've lived here for, for most of my life and I've traveled all over the, the earth, which is actually informing things that I do uh, because it's, a, it's an integrating perspective. Uh, my background is architecture. A long time ago, I mutated to something I call liquid architectures and trans architectures and uh, world making and uh, I kept, on, kept on mutating at this point. I, I make worlds. Uh, as art, as science, uh, but also as philosophy. Like, what does it mean to make uh, make the world in terms of research? Uh, the world making itself is uh, is a question. It's led by a concept called transvergence, which is transformation that leads to speciation, which is uh, inspired both by biology and what new species are, uh, but also by mathematics and, and what happens there. Like Joanne, I'm interested in higher dimensional space and non-Euclidean geometry. Uh, but in architecture, from my background, I'm specifically interested in generativity, algorithmic and computational composition, and all of those things. Um, there's another side, which is uh, a current side, just observing what we're doing, 
and uh, there's this, these terms that have been flipping in my mind, uh, literate media, uh, which has a little bit of a jab in it because a lot of the things that, we're, that are happening not to us and our students and the people that we work with, but in our culture, a lot of it is uh, illiterate media. Uh, and I don't, in my conception, I don't think we need to divide the world into this or that. It's good, like wherever we see a difference, to actually uh, heal it. So in terms of the, the questions that uh, Gustavo sent to me uh, and, and Leonardo, uh, I remember specifically when I first saw the first issue of Leonardo that I set my eyes on. I had been doing these kinds of things as an undergraduate a long, long time ago and thought I was you know, alone in the universe doing this. And then I saw this issue of Leonardo and I realized that I wasn't alone, that there were other people in the world uh, doing this work. And I think everyone who, who comes across Leonardo has had this experience that someone has spoken to us and said, oh, you're a Renaissance person. And they don't mean it as a compliment. They mean it like you're, you're a jack of oh. all trades. Uh, and uh, I think Leonardo already in its origin was against that. But here's the thing. My impression is that the COVID is an opportunity to heal lots of things to restore a lot of things. And so uh, I'm going to throw this into, into the conversation that in 1919, 1918 was the previous pandemic, 1919 was the end of World War I and the, the Treaty of Versailles, the world broke. All sorts of things broke. And for a century, uh, breaking became the dominant metaphor. Rupture, disruption, uh, disintegration, decomposition, deconstruction, everything was to be pulverized and the digital helped because it made everything into bits. A hundred years later, everything is in bits. Everything is, is shattered and we're living it literally right now in a pandemic uh, with Black Lives Matter, with a divided electorate, with a million different things that are shattered. And we can respond with a proposal for a new modernity. Uh, I'll use transmodernity. I was glad to hear transmodernismo, uh, you know, which is like a, a, a different kind of attitude, which instead of being uh, uh, enamored with the, disrupt, the disruptive as destructive, it can instead be about healing, about sustainability, about integration, about composition, about uh, bringing things back with no loss of innovation, with no loss of uh, adventure, with no loss of, of uh, concern for the future. The last thing is in terms of things that are presently on my mind, uh, AI is of course, AI, neural nets, machine learning, all of that is fascinating everybody. Uh, but there's a, there's a troubling trust that it won't be biased. There are people that, that I, I've been hearing uh, who are claiming that, well, maybe we should hand over the government to AI. And <laughs> as interesting as that may sound, it's also a little bit crazy. Uh, and so on the other hand, you don't want to say no to things. So I'm interested in a fusion of say, you know, the cluster of things that are called AI with the cluster of things that Damasio uh, would call feeling, but understood biologically, scientifically as homeostasis, which occurs at the bacterial level or pre-bacterial level or who knows how early, goes through, through all the levels of evolution and arrives at the other end uh, at culture. So how could we actually make a civilized world, you know, as a, as a kind of research agenda of a group of people such as we are, how can we actually act to re-civilize ourselves and reintegrate ourselves with nature and stop breaking everything because there's practically nothing left that isn't in, in, in bits. Thank uh, you. Thank I'm, you. I'm gonna, we're running out of time, so we're going to actually pivot. So we're gonna drop a bunch of slides, uh, Gustavo, and we can't see the slides anyway right now. Give me a um, what, so the people that I've called on are our guests for um, the purpose of this experiment, and the rest of us who are on the panel are going to um, step off of the platform. Um, what I what I do want to do is, um, if you, this is great, if you just take a look at this slide for one second and perhaps make a note of this, that 
what, you know, what are the most important social questions your work addresses? And, and Marcos was kind of giving us a really good example of, he already, he didn't see the slide, but he jumped to it. Truly an intuitive entrepreneurial scientist. Um, and, and how has COVID impacted your plans for the next iteration of your work? We were gonna share that, but we don't have time because we need to get to the experiment. Um, so please make a note of that that is what we're going to talk about next. Um, but then if we could advance to the question of the day, please. Here's the question of the day. What would you like to create as a community response to COVID-19? Um, and when I say you, I don't mean you alone. I mean you amongst this panel of incredible thinkers. Um, so what... Um, if you could make note of this, because it looks like we're gonna have to pull this off in order to see everyone. Um, did everyone get that question? Um, and then what, if you, what we're gonna do next is, um, uh, this is a little tricky. So one of the things in that film that we didn't get to see the whole thing of, but the musicians had, they were told that there was gonna be something confusing that they had to navigate, but they didn't really know what that was. And, um, and it was really the experiment, which is how do you do that? So there's, you're going to do something similar. You're going to figure out what are you gonna create in response as a community response to COVID-19 using your work from your perspective. But more importantly, you're using everyone here on your team to create something that you couldn't do by yourself. So you, perhaps you, kept note as people were speaking about, oh, you know what, that person knows this thing and I've often thought, I wish that I knew about that. Um, uh, in my own work, I've needed animators and um, filmmakers and musicians uh, to help me be able to take my ideas and make them concrete um, and to deliver my ideas. And so what do you need from the people on this team? So here's the trick. You're going to have a conversation now for about 12 minutes. That's all we, the time we have. And at the end of 12 minutes, I'd like to hear what you, I'd like you guys to come up with something, but I'm going to tie your hands and feet together by this one thing. I'm going to ask you to only speak in questions. So you can, so let me give you an example. Um, I might say, Joanne, you know, I've been thinking about creating uh, this uh, environment where somebody could go in and um, you know, fill in the blanks. Um, well, how could your work address that? And, and Joanne's not going to just give me an answer. She's going to address me and I'll have given her enough information about me uh, and my idea that she can address it directly, but she's going to end it with a question. And she could ask, maybe she'll ask Marcos because it sounds like you two have done some work together or you're highly aligned, but out of that exchange will come another question to another one of you. We are gonna track the interactions and at the end, we're gonna show you what your dynamic looked like. And if you can remember the orbs that we had with the line, you're gonna create something like that, all right? And, if, and I'm here to help facilitate that. So if I think you need some help or if someone has gotten carried away and needs to be reined in, I, that's my job. So take it away. And, ha and most of all, two, there are three words, dream, play, and then frame. So can I, we can I jump in with a question yeah, for everybody? Say, are we just supposed to jump in or should we be? Is, so is we be monitored. Are we monitored or are we on our own? You're on anyway, I have a question for everybody. It applies to everybody. And it's a question. What is the question to which what you do is the answer? Like if you're an architect, what is the question to which architecture is the answer? Mark, if you're, let me intervene for one second. Um, so what, do you have a sense of how that will answer the question of the day? Yeah, I think so. I think it's essential. I think okay. it's because we don't answer that, that we don't get anywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. That's what I think. I could be wrong. No, no, but I just want you to, so here's the thing. So one of the pieces that makes a group collaboration effective is if you are going to have a target, and we've given you 12 minutes to have an answer to that one question. So it, it's like a needle and a thread. It becomes the needle eye that puts you through it. 
a lot of these questions are so fascinating. And, so and say the question again. Say, say the question again. Okay. What is the question? No, no, not you. Oh. Say that question, and then I want you to say your question. Okay. So, Laura, say the, what the question is, the COVID question. Just articulate it again. What would you like to see as a community response to COVID-19? Got it. Got okay. It. And Marcos is now saying, what is it that you do? What is your area that would allow you to contribute to this community response to COVID-19? Am I on the right track here? <laughs> There's no wrong track. Sure. <laughs> okay. So that's where we are right now. Yeah. Who wants to talk? <laughs> Um, sure, I let the historian bounce in. So if and you're don't forget, and don't forget that you have to do it in questions. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. So, what my discipline contributes is to look at patterns in the past, and I guess as a warning sign, what happens if we don't address the issues. So, I think that's kind of important. I can tell all the things that can go wrong, but also some things that have worked and have gone right. And now I have to make this into a question. <laughs> as in, I guess my question would be the creating the community part, right? So if I make this very general and say, what can an our disciplines do to create the community that we've been missing so much, as Marcos pointed out with the fragmentation and the splittering and everything. So how can we help create the community, but also then share it to a community, right? Because if it's just in here, then that's great. That's us. That's like 20, 30, 40, 50 people. But how do we, how do we get this bigger out there? I'd like to answer that and then pose another question to that, because this is something we've been working on for a long time. We feel that we have an infrastructure uh, with, with uh, me being a composer, spatio-temporal aspects and bringing that into all of the senses and trying to talk to scientists and people in other communities, um, this feeling of, of, of you know, coming together as a group and having a platform like we're talking about with Leonardo is really important. So how do we now disseminate that? How do we get beyond that certain level um, you know, of what we're doing? And I think you know, making that infrastructure is the first step, but it's also going to be how do we come together so that every day, each one of us can be talking to a scientist, an artist, and an engineer at a daily basis and other people, the community out there, the diversity, because outreach is, diversity is not outreach, it's talking to people from different, different walks of life. How do we create places where everybody can come together and share their information from the areas that they come from? So that's what I'm throwing out to everybody. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, you, yes, okay, you. So I want to answer the question you, question answer you. Okay, so um, we're talking about how we're going to deal with COVID as if it's something new, yet we haven't analyzed how we've already been dealing with COVID-like issues uh, before. So why are we not looking at how we've already been dealing? Let me That's explain right, myself. That's why my typhoid fever yeah, back yes. in my, let, my, let, my historian. Let, <laughs> let me explain myself, right? So from my perspective, uh, my work has multiple fronts, right? And I channel something called rascuache to help me through, right? And rascuachismo is like an attitude or a sensibility, and it's also an aesthetic, right? And an example of that would be you repurpose butter containers uh, to hold beans or salsa instead, right? Or creating art and beauty out of trash and crap, right? Uh, with doing what you got. So we have been having the issue of uh, undocumented uh, issue. Um, the students have been living basically in quarantine uh, since the beginning of time, uh, since we started uh, this nation and then we started attacking uh, immigrants as criminals. And so the impact that COVID has had in people now is spreading. It's like, it's kind of like the border life and the border marginal experience is the one that is spreading now. It's no longer nations that are spreading, but our experience as border people is becoming like uh, greater and greater. So now we're asking, you know, how can we use then uh, the knowledge and conocimiento and the expansion of Nepantla now, because it's the expansion of Nepantla and the rise of like uh, actually valuing similar sensibilities to rascuachismo to then answer this question. So how can we then not only speak to people, but actually invite them to play with, uh, with everybody else and have equal share? That's my well, question. Let me ask the question. So Joanne, did she answer your question? 
Yes, she did answer my question. And she asked another question, which I could answer, but I'm going to let somebody else try to answer. Oh, you, and then Mary. I would have asked another question. <laughs> and I <think laughs> thank you. <laughs> and and Jasu, did you want to answer also the question from Joanne? Yeah, but I think I have to get um, Liliana answer also, or should I can go back to <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, maybe, okay, so maybe find a, a strata between the two and, and take it to the next place. I will, I will gather Julian and Marcos and uh, Liliana, maybe nice. that's the best way. <laughs> and I kind of believe, I mean, I kind of think I'm only most of our person in the, like, in the physical way. I'm from, I'm, now I'm in Korea, Seoul, Korea. And what I think I saw a half of person in here, so I can feel very like, wow, I saw you again, I see you again. And I feel, feel that, but now many generations cannot even see in a real person like uh, from first time. So, but hope they are really together. And I, when I work with a group, even right now, of course, we do all this Zoom, Zoom or like a digital thing. And, and sometimes do we meet? Um, it's still very working. So I'm very surprised, very, uh, very like, wow, it's still working. I would think it's like uh, too flat, but still okay. So my, my question is, I actually researched Marcos Novak's work like a long, long time ago. And uh, so I kind of made the model for like, we meet together as digitalized and physical at the same time, so your liquid architecture thing. And also, of course, you want to work like a hologram can, I can go anywhere and I can really see right now in here too. <laughs> when I see your like uh, background, I can, I feel like they are here because I saw that in the rear too, too and I, I, I explored. So I have a question for, I'm, physically far from maybe you guys, but I feel very bond. And um, I, of course I can manage some of this, my more close my part, but um, what, maybe I go back to the Marcos too, but uh, what is liquid architecture or like a digital thing or hologram thing, can we feel the, it's not a tactical, it's not a like that kind of thing, but how can you feel it? Even more like want to feel that, that is my question, but I think it's everyone's question too. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that sounds like a question to me, uh, but I need to answer it with a question, right? Uh, to everyone. <laughs> or, or, I, or to everyone. Um, Anyway, I've spoken, so maybe someone else can speak and I can come back. To I, have a, I have a thought, and this is Cletus. Um, <clears throat> I think all the questions raised um, for me in relationship to my work, one of the things is how an expansion of the idea of the way people communicate and how that communication in some ways can uh, form a place um, very much relates to Jisoo's point there about how, in fact, right, this is a space we're creating here. Um, and I thought it was really valuable what Liliana was saying um, in terms of uh, uh, Las Cochismo, because one of the things that I wonder about, and this is something Laura touched on at the beginning, is how in the expansion, in the discourse, in these things that we associate with liquid, do we continue to create um, either cells or the kind of binding that creates an actual tangible progress, not just uh, a vapor of expansion. And I think the concept of rasquachismo points to the fact that there are things that already exist. They could be tools, they could be histories, but that realization, okay, some things exist, so we can work with them. And also the question I would pose is how do we work in such a way that we continue to create tangible uh, uh, forms 
that are productive as opposed to just expanding. How do we relate to each other, whether it's in small groups or actual products or things that then are cumulative? Well, what I'd like to do is quickly um, break in because I really love the, the, the things that we're talking about with, with the board and what you've been talking about with this expansion. How do you take these, these things and bring them out? And the, the thing behind me, that's the time dependent Schrodinger equation, um, uh, the, the probability waves. And we had that in the Children's Museum. We had Nobel laureates um, explaining quantum mechanics by laughing about how beautiful it looked to people from two to 92 from all all walks of life. So how do we get to the point where we take our areas of discipline, bring them all together as a community and bring them out? And a lot of the things that you're talking about with the border deals with the fact that people that are coming from different walks of life have different areas and strengths of expertise. And let's not, let's not forget about what history has done. And we've got to look back and we've got to see what history is doing and how we can take that and move it into the 22nd century. So my question now is going to deal with how do we now take what we know and bring it out there, bring these communities together. And if we can't do it now physically, we're definitely going to have to do it virtually. So how do we start to connect together whatever we've got and, 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 and put it so that we can talk to each other like this at a daily basis and get it done? Let me jump in since, since to, to answer that and, and to leave everybody with a question, but also to address the, the sort of emergent liquid. Um, by, by some uh, alignment of things, uh, I've been asked to write a preface to a book in which uh, Zygmunt Bauman's uh, liquid modernity is coupled with my liquid architectures. And in the meantime, I've been working on transmodernity and, and, and other things. And uh, th there's, th there are some differences that are useful, which I'll, and I'll end with a question very quickly. But uh, water, which is a liquid, is made of hydrogen and oxygen, and the molecules of water are not liquid. They're dry. I mean, mm -hmm. the liquid is an emergent property. Or we are 70% water, but some percent calcium. And if we liquefied our calcium, what would happen? The, the, the notion of liquid architectures is not only about the liquid. That's just getting drunk. Uh, you know, you know that, meaning, meaning it's, ex, it's exciting, but it's insufficient. You need the coupling of the liquid with what resists it. You need the architectures. You need the skeleton. You right. need molecular forces. You need a complementary uh, hardness to make the thing actually work. So the question then to anyone who cares is what is the complementary uh, thing to your either skeleton, the hard part, the architecture, or to your liquid, the variable mutable part? Uh, because uh, I think in the past we've, we've divided the world. I think now we need to actually look at how things interlock and not resist the opposite, but embrace the opposite. Uh, so what opposite, what opposite can you embrace? Excuse me to interrupt, but Sarah, I think Sarah hasn't said it, something, so I would love to hear from Sarah. I mean, I'm, I'm particularly interested in, in sort of how to integrate the last three questions, actually. The, the question that I, I keep having um, when I heard about sort of that discussion about integrating sort of two states of your own matter, hypothetically, and, and going back to, to, what, uh, to what Cletus had said about having sort of the, the dichotomy of cells versus the area outside of a cell and how things have to operate within the structure. I, I'm struck as we're all speaking by how much of this depends on how we view our own discipline and how each of us is an expert in our own discipline and it's about integrating those disciplines. And the first time that Joanne was mentioning it, I, I was wondering, is it actually beneficial to think it, uh, about ourselves in our discipline is, is discipline as a concept hindering our ability to work at the junction and and sort of the question that I have is that space outside of a cell or that space outside of a discipline can especially in the academy be a very dangerous space to enter it can be a space that people see as very threatening and or uh, undermines your ability to sort of hold your ground 
So my question to all of the experts here is how do we as individuals act outside of cells to have that behavior of the ants, to have that sort of uh, self-aggregating behavior as a group? How do we enter a space that may not seem safe? How do we find that support so that we can integrate between disciplines when the discipline itself can be a siloed thing that is safer? We have to get outside of the institution and the conversation. Institutions are broken. University is broken, cities are broken, industries are broken. They've got to change to back to communities again. If we can bring our information out to the public, if we can talk to the janitor on the street corner and say, this is what I do, and we can find out what that janitor has to offer us because that does have something to offer us. That's how we bring these communities together. We were going forward to try to do this physically and we were stopped by COVID. I mean, I was going to be given, you know, the Macy's building downtown and I was going to build this with no money, of course. Uh, I was going to get the people together to make this happen. And, and that stopped. Now we've got to do it on, on, on now we've got to do it virtually. So now that means that we that are sitting here right now have to figure out how we're going to unite and how we're going to come together as a team. And you're right. The discipline isn't where we need to be. I started 36 years ago and I had to work with people in a discipline just to evolve into a hybrid program. But I realized one thing, you can't begin as hybrids because if you lose your roots, you have nothing. So that's when you become a jack of all trades and a master of none. So it's bringing those things together. So again, what I'm asking you all now is how can I and the atmosphere and everything I've built and the infrastructure right now that's open source licensed by the regents of the University of California that all of you can have, how do I get it out to you? How do I get you to use it? How do I get you to work with me? Yeah. This is what I want more than anything before so, I die. I'm 67. Come on, help me. So, <laughs> so, so how can I get you to use my painting? Mm -hmm. The this information in my painting. This mm -hmm. is it. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to intervene here and say, first of all, um, this has been way too short. I wish that we had the entire hour for, the, for all of you. And, and I think maybe we could see if we could figure out a way to have this conversation um, in the second stage, because I would love to see what you can come together with. Um, there's so much that you brought out already. I think we're so close to a really seminal idea from your particular collaborative around the cellular um, uh, realization of something concrete out of uh, really diverse and um, disparate points of view and, and maybe an answer to Joanne's plea about the allosphere. So maybe we're gonna talk about follow-up in a minute and we'll, I'll keep that in mind. What I'd like to do at this point is, um, uh, Gustavo, do you, you have the drawing for us? Getting oh. ready, Gustavo's gonna make a drawing for us. Um, but in the oh. interim, in the so, meantime, so one question, uh, this is a question to Danielle. Danielle, how much time do we have? Because I thought we had till 4.30, is that true? Uh, we, have, we have till 4.30, Okay, right? so, oh. so so yeah, she said yes. We have four till four thirty. Okay, so uh, give me like uh, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You have some time. So, but in the, what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask all of you to just talk about what this experience of collaborating was like for you. It was great, and what I want to do is give you all my personal Zoom PID, and you can get in touch with me at any time because we need to keep talking to one another, and hopefully we can do this through Leonardo. That's the idea, to set this up. Um, so I thought it was wonderful. I'd love to hear from my other um, colleagues, friends that I'm now meeting on this. Can I say one thing? I said, you know, one of the things that's important about this group and then, and then any other groups that we connect in with is that we honor the, the, the space that which these groups cult, cultivate from, right? And there's things, there are groups that are gonna be online and offline. There's, there's um, like, I, I'm, I'm thinking back into a lot of um, um, cu cultural groups who have meetings with their communities and their elders, and there's really one person that represents that particular voice, uh, and they're not going to be participating in mass Zoom calls. We have to also make sure that we understand that there are people who cannot uh, log in um, to in any type of virtual platform because it could be um, for, for lack of technology or just time. 
there's a lot of factors in that space. And like when we consider how we connect communities together and, then, and, and, and the values and the needs and the behaviors of everyone around the world, that we're not gonna agree on everything uh, all the time because everyone's val priorities are gonna be a little bit different. Um, but we wanna make sure that we're holding those spaces sacred. And when we have those pushbacks or introductions that we, we also value those as well and, cr and constantly be creating that space with everybody that we interact with rather than just being within our own networks. Um, it's dangerous to only be listening to your own people. You have to really uh, be willing to be uncomfortable and take things that are um, sometimes really against the grain of what you personally think. Uh, or, um, or or put you in a space where um, you, you may come out with more questions than you had going in. And I really encourage that uh, because that is allowing for that growth. But as we look at the geomet geometric process in which this, this can be alchemized, I think, you know, we have the power in terms of like the intellectual and will and, and network to make something like that happen, but I don't want to make it really exclusive to where it's really only held in the academy. Um, that really is bringing in, community, in indigenous communities, communities who don't have any access to technology, um, communities that are you know, um, frontline workers who do have zero amount of time to get on a Zoom call that you may only really be able to talk to on the bus. Um, so I want to make sure that those spaces are also really held wide open and that while we're talking about liquids and structures that we also are porous and that we're allowing things to come into us and, and, and change us. Um, you know, if we're, you know, really, we're going to talk about follow up and that is great. I just, but I wanted to capture the immediate experience of the panelists who were creating that. Okay, okay. Sorry, Laura. To simply, to simply look at what was that collaborative process like for you? I think it was fascinating to see all the different perspectives. So to me, it's all delicious. You know, it, you know, I'd, I'd love to connect. Uh, uh, as Gustavo knows, like ancient Greece to indigenous culture, to to uh, what happens at a biological level, to mathematical structures. That's that's kind of what we we do. And to go outside the academy to do that, the criterion I think is basically goodwill and openness and uh, dedication to making, to actually thinking anything but doing something. And it's, I see it here, it's great. Uh, for me, it's a new space, right? I've been doing this kind of work on my own, like in my little island for like the longest time. So uh, it's something new and it's a little bit awkward too, because you don't know, like you don't want to speak over anybody, you know, and Zoom meetings are usually awkward, like because of that reason, right? You don't know, like who wants to say something, right? Um, and also I, I go away with final thoughts, you know, that, I, you know, that I've, uh, taken from the information you've given me, I'm thinking about, you know, how we think about working across disciplines as something that will, you know, uh, that is like the most innovative way uh, that we can expand what we think or what we believe in. But then again, th uh, when we think about working across disciplines, this still means uh, to work within the parameters of a specific format of understanding what knowledge and information are uh, valuable or not valid enough. You know what I mean? We're still working within the parameters of Western European uh, um, knowledge base. So um, there are other schools that are non-schools that have existed continuously since the five, uh, 1500 before that, right? That come from before uh, um, the first settlers arrived to, uh, from Europe here. So we need to invite those other imaginaries or ways of understanding how information and knowledge and exchange can exist that have already existed again, but in, uh, ignored. Now, I realize that we also really need to exchange more information between us about like where we're coming from and learning to be okay with the constant reconfiguring of the self and others. So identity uh, needs to be given also more importance, not less. We're not going towards homogeneity. We're going towards more heter heterogeneity. Uh, we need to demystify the idea of pain, of loss, and reconfigure it in a way that we can help people see that actually embracing the fractured state or the differences in actually, um, in, 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 you know, what we, we think as negative, which is divisiveness, is actually part of growing process. We do not have to be unified. Uh, we need to have respect and honor for the different forms of existing and exist it maybe even in spite of each other and be okay with that, you know? So I'm taking that with me today. So thank you. Very lovely. Someone else who hasn't spoken. From Sarah's talking, and then I really agree with Daniel, and I, I believe everyone doing to 
donate your talent and your your thing and of course like expert or our what we worked in uh, 30 years like Julian and uh, everyone work like a decade more than decade but now yesterday I talked to with one of the presenter and then he asked me what my problem right now or what you really need to right now and then I'm thinking is the economy or is the what but actually that was energy and second mm -hmm. one is maybe like hope, hope, hoping like to see the future um that like uh, say many many things not just uh, our art or science not only that so um then like i try to even donate uh lecture to kids school uh, like live kids library like as a joint and we had of course have to handle with like sometimes we cannot ex expect like inside this presentation and what you said like this the digital thing so, so some library we have to do explain the science and this is october skies which is scientist gathering and the science meets art in like just a hand and my my face so we have to deal with that and we have to figure out that and then so like like what we are doing it's like what you guys say like see each other and have uh, energy and make me keep to see something because of uh, because of the zoom i'm now just i'm participating every ai conference and i think everyone do see graph and uh, idea and the whole and i can be maybe more expert but not like a good way but for what because i cannot see the what the future really is so i just need to really keep things in my in to me then i can keep myself i just i don't know what can, can i see it so i just keep things in my mind so we need to like have energy to give each other us and then like everyone I, I think so that's like another i got from today i'm very thank you to, to the whole year yeah i mean with the whole notion of energy too so that was that was actually i was trying to figure out a couple of words you know speaking about this 30 seconds rule but energy is what this panel gave me energy hope and also a really important reminder that i think Many of us get very stuck in our research in our particular niche, right? And and I think with the with the pandemic especially, I mean, we're we're you know, maybe connectivity has maybe it's even more difficult to connect and network with people. And this was such a beautiful reminder of what can happen if we actually talk to each other from all different walks of life. So I mean, there's some words in here that I have no idea what they mean and I wrote them down <laughs> and I'm gonna Google them afterwards, I'll be honest. But it's really, yeah, I wish we'd have an afternoon where we could sit around and drink tea and the things we could come up with. It's really, it's, it shows the power of different people with different experiences from different walks of life coming together and having a conversation and creating a community. Right. So thank you all very much for that. It's been super inspiring and motivating. Thank you. Thank you. I think Sarah and Cletus haven't spoken. I mean, I, th I would follow up on that notion of energy, that excitement that I, I found it was just interesting. Also, the, the format of kind of throwing something out so that each person spoke and then threw something, I think, created a real connective tissue um, that you could say, oh, I wasn't thinking about that, but now that makes me think. Um, and so I thought that was very successful and it left me feeling like I just, wow, I like, I like this group. Yeah. I want to keep this conversation going. And considering we've got a, a military historian on board, one of the things that I've thought over and over again is that because um, I know Gustavo from a, from a small but productive collaborative group is just there's that space where you've got enough uh, diversity of opinion, but also uh, it's small enough that people hear each other and the energy kind of goes. And so I was thinking, I've long thought it's interesting that the military has ideas like a squat, like what is the small number where people relate to each other? Um, and that was very much in the back of my mind in terms of that notion of the cell or the expansion, like what is it that we already know on a human level of like strong human bonds, a family, a community or something. We all know 
when it feels like, no, we're kind of bonded with each other and we care about hearing each other and back and forth as opposed to showing up at a stadium and being like, ah, there's lots of us, but I don't know who's here. So what I came out of this was like, can, can we keep talking to each other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah, and, and I mean, I completely agree with everything that's just been said. I feel like it's, it's, it's a very resonant sort of space, and it's interesting to watch sort of different, to watch similar shapes and similar forms be sort of reflected back or refined in different contexts and different fields and different points of view. It's sort of the clarity and, and, and resolution that you get on the actual thing we're looking at or the thing that we're dealing with becomes a lot more manageable, I think, across fields in that way. And, and there's something by creating this space where the focus or the theme or, or sort of the, the basket that holds all of this is actually a focus on the interdisciplinarity and a focus on problem solving from multiple bases that sort of, it sort of starts to get maybe distantly at answering the question I posed through what, what everyone has said, which is, you know, how, how do you provide a space that itself is rigorous and safe to explore this? I mean, I, I'm feeling like this is a space that's sort of like that, where everybody's discipline instead becomes a toolkit or becomes sort of an offering as opposed to a cage. Um, and, and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, yeah, it's very encouraging. And I think it, it's, uh, it's a nice antidote to what it often feels like to have intellectual discussions in, in an institution. Mm -hmm. So um, there's two more slides that I want to show. Gustavo, can Steven? we have uh, slide 20? Uh, Steven, what's about a, we've got a hand up. Or is this the time for me to talk or do I wait till after the slides? Wait, we need the slide first. So okay. we have slide 20. Um, oh. Oh, you're drawing. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> um, the one on the left, Laura, is the 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 diagram with okay. everyone's initials. So, but I, we have another slide, Gustavo, where we talk about the. It, it's the last slide in the. This one? one. Yeah, I just wanted to go to that, and then I'd like to go back to that one. Okay. So, um, well, I wanted to just comment on what everyone has said about um, you. Everything that you've said is beautiful, and I think you've really captured my experience both of our collaboratives process and watching you guys work um, it's thrilling it's energizing it's very exciting and it does show the kind of power that um you know what sarah was saying is becoming unlocked from the cages of your dis the academic disciplines and being free to create take your tools and really create something powerful what it takes is this summary here that there, this actually wasn't a random conversation. It was actually designed. So we, we, it, it itself is a discipline, um, and it's kind of why I've been a badass in, in sculpting and intervening and and <laughs> on a form because it actually supports the kind of profound human connection that you guys have manifested. Um, so there was an agreed upon collaborative structure and. We, we set a time and space and unfortunately way too small space and time that so there was an expected outcome, which was an answer to a question. And while we never got to that answer, we got to so much of the elements of it. Um, you guys let people know what you do and we could draw on it. It created a context. There was a commitment to respect, trust, equity, and safety. Um, there was listening and there was play. And so um, now we can go to the yours, uh, Gustavo. Gustavo drew a pattern of the interactions between you and that it, it, it's, if you can imagine that in that orb that we had earlier on in our presentation, we could make one orb for you guys because you are a collaborative that created um, a, a, an, a, an, um, a biosphere. And, and Stephen, did you wanna to talk to that? No, I just made some notes and some ideas to the right. Oh, to the um, right, good. Yeah. Do you um, want to say anything well, about that? Yeah. Can you go to the, the general so I can see everybody's face? Are we on everybody's face or whatever? Okay, great. Thanks. I'll just be two minutes. Cut me off, Laura, if I go too long. Okay. Um, please. Um, so um, that Alice fair is an amazing thing. Um, and these geometrical forms, uh, the orbs, Marcus's work, they're amazing things. Um, I see this geometry as kind of a vessel to explore not just the outer world, but the inner world, mm -hmm. the macrocosm and the inner world. 
and a topology, a true mathematical transformation to explore this terrain and more importantly to, to, to traverse it, you know, to existence, you know, our potential to existence. And so I think that artists need to take uh, scientists head on toe to toe. Mm. I'd like to see him mm -mm. artists challenge <laughs> the scientists with mathematics. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. Oh yeah. So I think <laughs> mathematics is the jugular of mm -hmm. the crux of some of this problem. And um, you know, so I, I want to empower mathematics and and molecular uh, scientists and uh, material scientists and all the different scientists uh, at all the great institutions to be taken on toe to toe by artists and um, mathematics. So well, for somebody like me who has have nothing past Algebra 2 in high school and doesn't know the programming language and I bid, built a sphere in a building that people want us out of immediately because artists shouldn't be there and we don't have a dime. We're there, man. We ain't going to go away <laughs> until they push us out into the streets and that's where we belong. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. There you go. Well, I I, this has been a wonderful, exciting conversation far, far beyond what I'd ever imagined so that we could achieve, even though I believe in the concept. Thank you all for your participation. And I put my email there if you want to contact. I can connect us all and we can see what the next iteration is. And Gustavo and Stephen, did you have anything else that you wanted to say as we close? I just feel honored to be here. I really feel honored. And, and Laura, Gustavo, they've been really wonderful. Uh, to talk with, to communicate with, and, and recently Sarah, and then again, all of you together, uh, and Danielle initiating everything, and, and Victoria, thank you, it's, it's wonderful. So, uh, so uh, just uh, into that, we have two more slides, but just very quickly, so one more second. <laughs> <laughs> get those slides in. <laughs> I, I have to do my job if I can make it work. <laughs> then we okay, got the dissertation got we're working on. Yeah, the dissertation is Lex. Um, okay. So, um, uh, basically for the follow-up, um, what, can, what can happen from these collaborations? So, you know, Leonardo is, an, uh, is a think tank. And it can support cross-disciplinary collaborations that can solve social complex problems. And I can tell you from my experiences in the last few months, I woke up, uh, writing a dissertation is one thing, but having people in need, and uh, it requires you to grow. And uh, I asked my advisors, I asked Marcos, Joanne, and Marco, how do I grow because I'm afraid? And I think, they told me they were not afraid. And Leonardo made me fear nothing because <laughs> I have to help. Um, what Dennis Joplin says, when you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, and this is uh, an effort from Leonardo and I'm uh, uh, the chair of this panel for the CAA that's happening in February. There's five days uh, for everyone to get more information and hopefully uh, submit an abstract and it'll be peer reviewed. And uh, Leonardo is behind it 100%. And hopefully we'll get some exciting, uh, you know, entries. So I would encourage everyone to participate and uh, spread the word. And the last slide is I wanted to thank everyone here, especially Danielle, who put us together, Steve, my team, Stephen, Laura, and then the community. You guys are the community. And um, and I guess the last image that I, I forgot to say is that, you know, this is a team of artists and collaborators, but you guys, um, in a strange way, I am honored to be here because I, I became very small at one point. And then I realized, and Victoria is, is someone that I've looked up to, she has gone all over the world and changed it. Okay. Joanne has done the same. Marcus has done the same. Danielle has done the same. So maybe all of us can do the same. But yes, we have to we have the... can. Yes, we yeah. can. Yes, we can. Um, I, but I anyway. mean, the, one, the, the one lucky thing. thing about us is we've had uh, academic paychecks that have allowed us to go these yeah. places. I feel very I, I think, much yes. the, the ones that don't. And that's what Danielle's talking about. 
we can't uh, deny that community as well. Absolutely, and, and it's just amazing with Ars Electronica after 40 years that they ended up having this situation where there's 120 locations and thousands of people from all over the world and a lot of people who didn't have money to travel to Linz, a lot of people who didn't get accepted to programs suddenly are participating. So the silver lining is I was listening um, and I took my screen off not to look at the screen, but just to listen and just to see how this community came together so nicely from three people. I remember when we did our rehearsal, it was three people and it kind of evolved. A similar thing happened with Ars Electronica. It was just a tiny thing and it evolved. So it's very nice to see. And I think um, it'll just keep growing and we have to do it to survive and to help the planet survive. So I'm very pleased that we took part of it. And of course, Danielle uh, is really a powerhouse, as we know, as everybody here. So thank you so much for including us. Uh, uh, just one last second. Uh, I think, Danielle, you had other things to maybe announce or share, but oh, okay. the current issue, of Le current issue of Leonardo is actually something that maybe you should all look at. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay. what, what else, Danielle? <laughs> uh, definitely apply to the to the open call and um, and check out our website for our different um, opportunities. But what we'll do is I'll work I'm work with the with the um, the team here, and we'll do some more of these community sessions because we are working on so many different projects. I can't even tell you. And there's a really big, huge one that's coming up that I can't announce because we don't have the official letter. But once that comes out, you'll you'll know. Um, but we are really excited to engage. But we're really ready to just change the world. And um, this is not easy. It's mm. hard. Um, yeah. But we're, we'll do it together. And it, it just let's do it iteratively and patiently, and with um, with equity and love and uh, and and energy and patience. So let's do it. And um, thanks everyone for for uh, your time today and all the attendees, uh, feel free to reach out to me or anyone on this team. Uh, great session, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Laura. Thank, thank you, you thank, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Steven. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.